Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about central bank digital currencies or CBDCs and programmable money. In the last episode, we talked about the history of money and how money actually came into being and why there is, centra- why there is a central bank and what it actually does. Uh, we also talked a little bit about the decoupling of the money supply from gold, uh, which is, uh, used to be the case that money was pegged to gold, specifically the US dollar in the Bretton Woods system, what we call the gold standard, which was abandoned in 1971. Now, that kind of led to the uh, fact that money supply became decoupled from that gold, and that's what we call fiat money. Uh, Fiat is Latin and actually means let there be, so let there be money. Um, And it kind of refers to the the fact that uh, central banks can now essentially uh, what's often called, you know, print money out of thin air or create money at the stroke of a keyboard. Um, And that's what we call fiat money as opposed to crypto money or uh, crypto coins that are not believed to be uh, fiat money or uh, the money that was actually coupled to the gold standard uh, before the Bretton Woods uh, agreements collapsed. Actually, a digital currency doesn't even have to be a cryptocurrency. While all cryptocurrencies are digital currencies, it doesn't have to be necessarily uh, the other way around. So you actually may know digital currencies or uh, from other contexts, like for instance gaming. Uh, in gaming universes you can have digital coins, digital currencies, and you can use them inside of the game to purchase things, to uh, like body armor perhaps, or an upgrade. Uh, so it's not a completely new concept at all. So digital currencies are currencies that can transfer value digitally. Now when we talk about central banks in this context, we talk about central bank digital currencies um, and we ask ourselves, well, where do they come from and why are central banks all of a sudden interested in digital currencies or making their own digital currency, you may ask yourself. Well, there was a lot of pressure on central banks when the other digital currencies started to take off. And by the other digital currencies, I really mean Bitcoin. Um, When Bitcoin became more and more prominent and other digital currencies, cryptocurrencies started to emerge, it became clear that they might be a viable alternative to fiat money. And the central banks started to be worried to a certain extent that they might be disrupted almost uh, in the sense that alternative money systems or systems of value transfer might be created that would perhaps call into question uh, the supremacy, perhaps, or the control that a central bank could have over the economy long term. Now, that's not the only reason. There are other reasons, of course. There is an emerging token economy, there's an emerging crypto economy, and of course, a central bank also needs to be responding to those needs and needs to be able to uh, uh, have a monetary policy that's adapted to this. So, there are many good reasons to uh, invest in research on central bank digital currencies. And a lot of central banks did. There's actually a, a really good map uh, you can have a look at on uh, the Atlantic Council website, uh, which will show. And this will actually give you an idea of where we are with uh, digital currencies, central bank digital currencies worldwide. What is so special about a central bank digital currency? And what are the options? What are the perhaps drawbacks? Well, one of the criticisms that many people have when they hear that central banks are issuing digital currencies is privacy concerns. Will the government be able to track every single transaction that everyone actually uh, does or transacts? How does that work with privacy concerns? Um, There are other ways of controlling this money. For instance, uh, the concept of programmable money. Now, if you think about the example of a stimulus check, Wouldn't a government be very interested in giving you a stimulus check that actually starts losing value over time? Why would they do that? Well, if it's meant to be stimulus, the money should be spent in the economy. So if you can incentivize that by saying, let's say, a thousand dollars or a thousand euros in October will be only 750 euros in November, 500 in December. 
when you have a very large incentive to spend that money immediately into the economy. And this is what programmable money can do. Another example, welfare checks, for instance. You could say, well, you can spend this money on certain issues, on certain items, not on others. So there is a new way of directing money and monetary policy, but also social policy and other policies through programmable money. Is this a good thing? Is it a bad thing? That's really the question and many questions are unanswered at this point and we are in a stage where central banks are experimenting with this. There are some examples where uh, experiments are already quite far ahead. So in China, for example, there is a digital yuan that's actually being field tested right now. There were wallets given to uh, people that actually contain digital yuan and they were being spent and uh, data is collected and uh, experiments are made, so to speak. If we're thinking back to the last episode when we started talking about what are the characteristics of money. In our first episode, we mentioned those characteristics. And again, I'm gonna have to read those. Durability, portability, divisibility, uniformity, limited supply, and acceptability. Now you can see that with programmable money and central bank digital currencies, these characteristics can be manipulated and they can be used in a certain way. For instance, uh, the acceptability, universal acceptability, the uniformity and the limited supply can all be tweaked in order to achieve certain policy goals. And uh, here obviously is where some people are really concerned and they think that might be taking it too far. On the other hand, central bank digital currencies can provide the kind of trust and stability that in this context only central banks can and that will be the argument that they would make. So there really is no clear answer here. But digital money isn't just used by central banks. In fact, many, many projects on the blockchain use digital money or forms of digital money. In fact, most of the projects that are built on the blockchain use some kind of token. The currency that's associated with a blockchain project, a token. By contrast, we call currency associated natively with a blockchain, a coin. For example, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is associated with the Bitcoin blockchain or Ether is associated with the Ethereum blockchain. So these are coins. And coins is what we're gonna talk in the next episode. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.